Hi, it's Alexis uh, Cuckoo Miss Amis here talking about to beef things. Um, I don't really have too many more videos that I was thinking of making, so please like let me know if you like them. Let me know if they've been useful to you. If you have other suggestions about things that you want me to talk about that I haven't, please let me know because I'm happy to kind of touch on things I haven't thought of. Um, I'm gonna make this video which is about more about kind of actually well safe traveling some things that I always try to do to keep safe and then also a lot more specific for like women or like issues that just like women are probably going to have you certainly can stay and watch it if you're if you're like you know not having typical like girl woman issues that you're gonna have to figure out what to do with when you're there or because I'm even going to talk about but I'm even going to talk about too like clothing a little bit and stuff like that um so feel free to stick in a uh, stick stay here there we go um but so that video will be today I also do I have an old video I made when I was in France still about my OFI appointment so I'll see if I want to redo it because now that I have better sound I'm kind of like Oh, maybe I should redo it. But anyway, I have the, the thing about the OV appointment that I want to put, put up. And then I was also thinking a video about resources, um, like to peef resources and stuff for um, just kind of like who you can reach out to and and even other like language resources and stuff. So maybe something pretty brief on that. I can't think of it. And then maybe like a full summary of like how my thought my year was and all that stuff. I know I started filming something in France, but I think one of the videos didn't look great, so I'll kind of play around with that. But um, I'm getting ready in like two weeks to go to Ireland for grad school, so it's pretty crazy. So I'll try to get bang out a couple videos before I go. Without further ado, I'm going to talk today about girl travel, um, safety, and also just kind of tips and tricks that are typically female specific or when you're having to deal with female issues. Um, like if you have any of that stuff that is speak to you or you can just hang around. Um, I think first starting off with safety. So I definitely have done like an okay amount of traveling. Like I've never been to South America, Asia, Africa. So there's like a lot of continents and stuff. And basically I've only been to Europe, um, and the United States and then like Caribbean islands and such as well. So it's not like very much that exciting, but I've definitely been places and um I grew up in New Jersey again and so I grew up going to New York and stuff a lot which I think is good and growing up having gone to a big city certainly taught me to be more vigilant um always and I just kind of did normal things like never trusted anybody too much uh when it comes to that stuff but I think I've done okay in Europe specifically since Tipeef is in France and I'll just kind of go off of there like before I went to Tipeef I had been to like Amsterdam Ireland. Um, I had done Italy previous to that. Was that it? Belgium. Not too many places, but a little bit. Uh, and then this past year, while I was doing Tapif um, throughout the program, some mostly with friends, like mostly with one to two other people, and then sometime in some places alone, I went to Prague, um, other parts of France, of course, like Strasbourg, but went to Prague, Vienna. Um, London, da -la 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 -la, let me think, bunch of places in Italy, like Cinque Terre, I had been to Florence previously, Cinque Terre, Rome, um, Genoa, and Venice, and then also Barcelona, and uh, like Andalusia, um, Sevilla, and Granada, so those places I all got, got to go to, I think that was it. Yeah. I think so. Um, so I got to visit those places, which is really, really nice this year. Um, and oh, Switzerland. I went to Geneva. Um, and I had pretty much okay experiences all the time. A little bit later, I'm going to talk about, uh, I guess, kind of uh, times maybe where I didn't feel so safe. But first, I'm going to just talk about um, things that I did always make sure I had or was doing to stay safe. So this is really applies to literally anybody. Um, one, I think it is always good to make sure you have, I think it's the same for all of mainland Europe at least, where like the safety, kind of like the 911 number is. Just make sure you have it in your phone. Um, obviously, I would recommend having like, I especially if you want to feel like super safe, 
Um, I know when I went to Amsterdam, me and my friend went for like a week and we just relied on Wi-Fi when we went. And before we go places, we would like Google map it from our Airbnb and then decide how we want to get there. And it honestly did work fine. We never had problems, which was really nice. But it is funny because now that I've had data, like I don't know how we existed without, um, <laughs> without like using, uh, data. But we did it, so it's fine. You can survive. But it was nice having the data. I know friends who've come over just to visit briefly did, I think, like, mostly like on Verizon, I think. And it's like 20 or $30 a day to have internet, which can freaking add up. But it depends how much money you have, what you're willing to spend it on. A lot of times, too, with countries, you can get um, SIM cards and stuff. Just the whole, like, make sure they're unlocked. I have Verizon. I checked while I was here to make sure it was unlocked. They said it was when I got to, I first actually did a SIM card in Ireland and they said it was fine and it worked. I got a SIM card to for like two weeks there and I paid for like a month plan. And it was like $30 or something. I think it might've been $50 after getting the SIM card. So it was a little pricey, but my mom really wanted us to use that when um, her and I went to Ireland. And so then I knew it was my same phone and everything that I knew went to France, it would be fine. And I got a free SIM card, like that's the brand free. A SIM card at like the mall because they had a free shop at the closest mall and I just took a bus there in Avignon. It was in Avignon Nord? I think it was Avignon Nord but it was there was a free store at the mall and you literally just like had to type in your address and stuff and it was like a vending machine that gave you the SIM card and you picked which plan you wanted. I had actually chosen I think more the international one that included me being able to call the U.S. are being able to call internationally without extra charges, so that was nice, um, and all that stuff. So I liked having a SIM card. If you can do that, if you can find a... When we went to Ireland, we were sure what to do, and we went into, like, a Vodafone store, which I think is the same as SFR, but for some reason it's called Vodafone in most other European nations. Um, we went in there. We actually asked our hostel. We were at a hostel, and we said, do you know where you can get a SIM card? She gave us some locations. We went into the Vodafone. They had a good deal. So we just got a SIM card from there. I was trying to keep it and it fell out of the case I kept it in and those SIM cards are so tiny. I don't know where it went. I think it literally fell in a crack like on my floor. Rest in peace, Irish SIM card that I could have reactivated, but well. So I'm keeping my, my French SIM card though on hand. Um, and I will have to, when I want to cancel it, I have to like write free a letter. Um, but having data is really nice. Uh, when I was in Switzerland, for example, uh, I think that for the most part, every country that's part of the European Union, if you have a SIM card for the European Union, it'll work anywhere. Um, it does not in Switzerland, and Switzerland actually charges you a ton of money um, more. Like, I barely use my phone because I had known this ahead of time, and I still think my phone bill was like an extra $30 um, that it normally was. So really be careful in Switzerland. They did have a decent amount of public Wi-Fi, I will say, but Switzerland was the creepiest I felt, was the word, the sc most scared I guess I got, um, like kind of uneasy, like feel like I might be attacked vibes. Uh, I know which is shocking because it was Switzerland and that's not what you think of when you think of Switzerland, but I got the most freaked out in Switzerland and I don't fright easily to be honest. And uh, yeah, so I had kind of ended up using more data there because I turned my phone on when I was not feeling safe. So if you are using your data and stuff, suck it up with money, just turn your data on, um, or agree to it because your life is more worth more than, you know, $30 or something like that. So being fun there. Um, also make sure your phone is programmed with like the ice number and stuff. So like emergency contact, have it in there. Um, I don't know what like rules are in Europe about like mace and stuff. Like in the U S I know a lot of people have mace. My one roommate had a, um, stun, legit stun gun in her room, which was cool. Um, I don't know about that. I know when I was, when I first moved to Virginia, my dad, we had gone uh, to a shooting range and I actually got me like this little mace thing that was super tiny, which was really nice. I don't know where it went, which I kind of get worried about cause it was so small. Um, but that was really tiny and nice. I don't know if they're allowed in, in Europe. Um, but if you're like really freaked out or something, or if you are concerned, you can always like at least tell your parents that you'll get one when you get there and maybe look around for some type of protection. 
Um, I didn't have anything, like I didn't have a whistle or anything like that, but I just was really vigilant. Um, but just like, if you look, if you're really carried and you want some type of weapon, look at stuff. There's also so many awesome people that are like creating sleek ways and like ring, like those runner rings that stab people and stuff. So, you know, uh, check it out. I, I don't know too much about it, but I'm sure you can look it up. Sorry, look at my list. Uh, yeah, I, I just really wrote, just be smart. Like, don't be dumb. Like, <laughs> you don't have to say that. Just use your common sense. Like, trust your intuition is a big thing for me. I am very intuitive. So I'll be honest, I know everyone's kind of sometimes, even though I live in the clouds, I'm very intuitive. And so I can sense when I don't feel good with the situation, but just be smart. Like you're like, oh, do I want to take this well-lit pathway or do I want to walk down this like creepy dark alleyway where I think there's a man lurking down there? Or like, do I want to walk down this side of the street that has a bunch of like creepy 17 year old hoodlums on bikes <laughs> because that was all the time in France. Or do I want to down the walk on this side of the street where there's like one old man like with a cane hobbling along? I'm gonna choose the old man street side of things. Um, so that is my recommendation to you. I know I'm being a bit was it the word facetious or something, but you know you get the point. Um, and yeah, just populated areas. Like stick to populated areas if you can. When I got creeped out. I crossed the street because there was a bunch of creepy dudes on one side of the street and then I just went back the way I had come because it was populated and lit, well lit and then I just tried to stay close to stores or restaurants where there are people. Um, if you know, if you're somewhere where you know and you know there's like a police station, walk towards the police station if you're really that creeped out. Um, put your, like call a friend, like there was a couple times I would walk home and um, I think it only happened once or twice, but I think one time especially that was in the beginning when I had first moved there and my, where my apartment was, was like kind of alone from other people. So I did have to walk and I had to walk through a little bit of a creepy area. It wasn't terribly creepy, but it had like a bar near it. And so depending on the time, there was kind of like big creepy people lingering. Um, and one time I just felt a little unsafe because also my apartment, it kind of sucked where I had to open my one door and then open my other door, but there wasn't like, um, an entryway. Like it was one door immediately next to the other one. So sometimes it's nice when you have like that kind of atrium where you can like open the door, get into your atrium and then walk up to your apartment. Cause that's very common in Europe and even like in New York and stuff and cities, but not my apartment. So I would call my friend and she would just like talk to me. So just like talk to your friends if you don't feel safe about going home. And obviously always too, like with friends and stuff, we would always be like, okay, text me when you're home, text me when you're home. I don't know if guys do that, but girls do that. Ever, or at least all my friends have always done that. I also have really great friends. So we're good to each other with that. But um, yeah, just looking out for each other and stuff and being like, hey, you know what? Just like stay on the phone with me. That's fine. Like I'm totally down for that. Like I would rather me have to stay up a little bit later, make sure you got home than, than something else. Um, if you are out and especially if you're traveling alone or something, I've read this before and I, I like this as a, a kind of technique to use. Don't be afraid to make friends. Um, if you're at a bar and you're getting creeped out, become friends with the bartender. Try to get their attention. Like, try to make friends with them. Maybe even say like, hey, I'm a little like, this person's creeping me out. Would you mind just kind of like watching out for me and, and protecting me and stuff like that or, or and stuff. And Or also if you're at a bar, like find other people that you have a good feeling about. Um, like a group or even kind of maybe parental types or something like that. People, people will usually take pity on you. Um, I was traveling alone while I was in Rome and in Switzerland and especially Switzerland wasn't as long there for. I did make a friend at the UN there, which is nice, but I made this, like I met some really nice people when I was in Rome through my hostel and then later I was at a pizza shop and eating pizza alone and this beautiful couple from um, Austria. They were so nice. <laughs> um, they started talking to me and they're like, oh, like, are you like, what are you doing? And then we walked all around Rome together for a while and they were like, it was so beautiful and I loved it. And it was just a nice way to meet people. So don't stay closed off. Be, don't be afraid to chat people up and stuff like that. And if you're feeling unsafe and, but you, but someone else there, like I would never turn down somebody, like helping somebody. Um, if you were like, hey, like, I'm alone and I'm kind of creeped out. Do you mind if I just, like, join your group? I'd be like, hell yeah, like, welcome. <laughs> um, don't be afraid. Better to be safe. Uh, yeah, trust your intuition. Yeah, and I'd say, like, obviously be smart. Like, don't get wasted alone. 
um, don't get drunk alone. And even in small groups, me and my best friend had gone to Amsterdam one year. And Amsterdam's fun. Honestly, Amsterdam is beautiful too. So it's not just like wild where I feel like everyone has this idea that it's like just debauchery filled and it's really not. Um, it's honestly gorgeous to me, but you can have fun there and we wanted to have fun. We were like in our mid twenties and at the time and stuff and which I still <laughs> like to have fun from time to time, but we were, in, we were in our mid-twenties, and we all had a good time, but it was only two of us. And so we were pretty tame, I want to say, for the most part. So, because you have to be smart about it, too. You're like, okay, there's only two of us. Like, we can't go crazy. Like, if there's three of us, at least maybe two of us could be a little bit more wild, and then the third could be the guardian for the night, and then the next day she'll get her turn and we'll be the guardians for the night. So that's the nice thing about going in bigger groups, and I will say, is good. But yeah, just be smart. Like, don't get drunk alone. Don't wander off alone, especially when you're in a foreign place. Um, this would happen in D.C., but I know one time we were in D.C. and there was this, like, uber drunk girl at a, at a nice whiskey bar, too, which is weird because it was, like, a nice place. Um, very crowded and stuff, but it wasn't, like, you know, a uh, dive bar -y at all. And they were, like, you know, like, $15, like, with, like, $15 Manhattans and stuff. And she was just like wandering around drunk and I think she had come over and like I'd seen her hopping she kind of kept coming over and talking to my group I was also talking to another group so at one point I went over to the other group and this guy and I was like Shh. I know this is please don't judge me for saying this but I was like does she belong to you I was like does she belong to you and he's like no like is she not with you guys and I was like no so I got like we got her water and I told her it was vodka because half the time people refuse to drink water if you tell them it's water. So that's always a good tip. Um, or get them seltzer, like get them seltzer or something because then they really aren't sure. Um, and then like I talked to the bouncer actually and I was like, hey, there's this girl. She's like really drunk alone. She was like kind of trying to like start fights with dudes, just dudes. And so I was like, I don't know like what she's doing can you can you please like order her a cab or something and so um he helped out and came in but like i was like oh, not another. but that was like the thing i was like where are her friends like where did her friends go like my friends are amazing i really do admit that i have a wonderful group of friends and i always seem to at least get a couple whenever i move or wherever i go i always seem to still find really wonderful people um decent human beings <laughs> they're good and will protect their own and stuff so I don't understand how that happens but yeah sometimes every now and then you're like where did your people go I think guys seem to do that more to each other than girls do but I've still seen girls get ditched by their girls and that's like so sad to see it's sad to see for the guys too but for some reason it seems to be like more of a thing um yeah and so that's a kind of a big thing of mine just be safe safety in numbers if you can and then just if you're not in big numbers just be smart when it comes to like substance use and I don't know what that sounds awful um but yeah you know what I mean times I didn't feel safe France is interesting I will say that um where we were at Avignon I have a pretty high high tolerance for getting freaked out and stuff like I for one I went to one semester of college in New York and I was going to school in the Bronx and so like I also grew up around New York like not a lot of things phase me I think because of that like I'm used to pollution <laughs> I'm used to kind of like wild people walking around and hassling me and heckling me and stuff like that doesn't really phase me there's like a certain level where then I'm like okay we passed the I feel safe threshold but it doesn't happen often um and then in DC and stuff too like we would I was out in DC every weekend um and it was fine like I never felt unsafe I don't think ever and like granted you know I knew what neighborhoods to, even though I think the majority of DC is pretty safe. Like I knew what neighborhoods weren't like, probably we shouldn't be like wandering alone through or like with somebody else at night, any of that type of stuff. Cause I definitely did, never like lately, but I definitely had to like traverse once through a very interesting neighborhood cause I put the wrong address into my Uber. And so that was like uncomfortable. And I talked to my mom the whole ride, like the whole walk. Um, but I digress, I'm sorry. Uh, I, France was definitely like had its moments where we were in Avignon actually did have a decent amount of like I don't know what the word is like hoodlums I, it's, I feel awful like hoodlums but it was just like punk 
like 17 to 21 du dudes who just like hung outside of the kiosk places like the quick checks or whatever they're called like the quickie mark type places and they would just like shout at you and like hassle you every time you walked by and just like talk about your butt and your body and all that fun stuff like every time and unfortunately too like I had a few friends who just like they lived on streets where at that corner of the street the people always were there and so you just really had to ignore them they never made me feel too unsafe and the only thing that made me really that bothered me about it was that like I couldn't always understand what they were saying because it was even though I spoke French like they'd use some words and things that I didn't know I would I would try if it were during the daytime I try to have my headphones in to like help me just block it out um and yeah I just wasn't always sure what they were saying so that bothered me and the fact that like if someone yelled at me in DC I know how I could respond that's not going to put me in danger and I think the thing that bothered me is like I don't know how I can respond or how I can not respond to make me the most to secure my safety I suppose so I think that was the most frustrating thing about when you go to foreign countries and somebody's heckling you or shouting at you or something like that and you don't know how to respond like one time I was in the Paris Metro this is like back in oh like 2011 or something and this guy on the Metro it was like 7 6 a.m. 7 a.m. and I think he was coming back from a club or something and he harassed me for like five Metro stops and like nobody said a single thing in my defense or anything like that horrible people <laughs> but but it was really uncomfortable and I literally just stayed like and he was like yelling at me and he was yelling at me in French but he was like saying like you're not French blah 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 I don't remember it was so long ago but it was really uncomfortable but like I was like I'm just gonna be a silent because I don't know I'm, like this is not my territory this is not my place this is not my first language I'm just gonna be quiet so that's usually what I did I just said stayed silent because like, I was like that's a good thing to do um there is a there were a decent amount of like homeless people it's France so like I don't know how anyone's homeless they have so many social like ways to catch you <laughs> they have so many um just plant like th th places to help you where I think a lot of even the homeless people were being homeless during the day but not so at night like they still had places to stay and stuff but there was like the was it punk shio or shio punk but like these kind of like punk homeless dudes that always had like a dog with them and they were all over the city and they were pretty nice like there was this one homeless man who was like my favorite and he was like so cool and he was like a leather American jacket on. <laughs> he was the best. He was my favorite and he was like, what I asked me for a smoke and I'm like, I still don't smoke. I'm sorry, buddy. Like I, st I know it's France, but I st I'm still not a smoker. Um, but everyone was always nice. Like I liked the homeless people. Like no one was ever harass me or anything I know some people had said you have to be careful about giving money and stuff because then they hit you up all the time and harass you if you don't give them money so I always tried to like offhandedly give money if I didn't I didn't give money often because I was like dude I am so poor but if I had a couple extra change some change change from like a Marie Paul share buy or something like that I'd be like I'd leave a little bit of money on the fountain that I knew like these two homeless people of like were gonna like turn around and sit on in like a few seconds and they could just take the money so like I do stuff like that but just being careful and being alert like San Francisco my god San Francisco is like the worst and San Francisco is probably the one of the only places in the United States that I've ever felt unsafe because of just the mental instability with a lot of their homeless population and it's a whole thing you can look it up they got kicked out of all of the, like the um a lot of like psych uh, psychiatric places that were sh and they were shipped to California, um, especially San Francisco and stuff. So it's why they have like such an extreme case. But it's really sad. It's of course really sad. But I have to worry about me and I have to worry about my safety. And San Francisco is one of the most uh, unsafe places I've ever experienced, especially in the United States when walking around. So, but I always felt like okay enough. Um, I think one time I didn't feel safe in in where I lived in Avignon was. I, some guy was like whistling at me but then he like his whistling kept following me and that freaked me out and that kind of led me to like sped I just sped up and I looped around a bit when I was in Italy visiting my friend once in college um some man asked me something and I was like oh I don't know I'm sorry and then they followed us like they kept following us and they wouldn't stop following us I think it was like these like anyway um they kept following us and so my friend just did make did us like this wild loop around so they like they couldn't 
track where our apartment was, which that was a little creepy. That was probably the creepiest. Italy and Florence when we went, because uh, she stayed, she studied abroad in Florence. I was like not a fan of Italy and I didn't want to go back. And then I went back this past year and it was amazing. I had an amazing time and I didn't have any of the creepy encounters. Like I had so many creepy encounters. And I was like, I don't know if I got way uglier or something. Like, because I get it that when I went there last time I was like 20, <laughs> but or like 19. So I don't know if I like aged and are just like not attractive anymore, but um, I didn't have like, I was not afraid at all in Italy. I had an amazing time. Cinque Terre, one of the safest places I've ever been to. That was amazing um, and gorgeous by far. But anyway, I also felt really unsafe in Geneva, which was weird, but it was a weird vibe. I didn't feel good. It was Saturday night, but there was like nobody around. And I literally went to go see a movie for like freaking 24 euros, which was insane. It was like the most expensive. He was like, do you want to drink? And I was like, no, I do not want to drink. No, I just paid freaking like 20, like $30 for a freaking movie. And like, it doesn't include a drink you're saying? I was wanted to die. But anyway, I saw a movie on a Saturday night and I don't know where I was in Geneva, but it was not the populated part apparently. And it was like so creepy empty. I legit got scared and I like was going to take a, a tram they didn't have any for a while, but I saw that there was another tram stop where I could go. And I started walking there and there was like guys right in front of me and guys right behind me and they were whispering and they kept looking back at me and I just started to feel really, really unsafe. So I crossed the street, turned on my data, backtracked to the movie theater where I had been because that felt like a nice area. And then I found another um, stop I could go to, another tram stop, a bit of a, like, but I had to go a little bit further down so that I could avoid the line that I would have had to go to and it was it was just as like really really uncomfortable and probably like the scariest I'd ever felt but I had like my phone data on and all of that stuff and um texting I think I was probably texting somebody just to be like hey like I'm not feeling really great right now um just like make sure I get home like make sure I text you in 20 minutes so you know I'm home or like give me a call because I don't feel too good so just really keeping people in the know like don't be the bigger person like be like hey it's okay to say I'm scared and I believe me I really don't frighten easily like I don't like a lot more people were annoyed in Avignon and grossed out like I was one of the people that wasn't as bothered but to be honest too I'm very much like a head down keep going earbuds in kind of gal where like that New York mentality and I just like RBF psh, and I'm on my way so I don't really let that bother me if I can help it. Um, I still stayed vigilant and I definitely do a lot of the time if I don't feel safe I do the earbuds in mute where I'm not actually listening to something but I like the earbuds because I think sometimes they one you can put them in and use them to turn your use your GPS so that people don't know that you're using your GPS really because your phone's in your pocket but your GPS is telling you where to go um, which is a lovely trick I've lo I love to use um, or two you could just like you look kind of more like you're local I feel like when you have your earbuds in um, and like but you have it on mute because maybe you're not feeling safe and you want to hear what's going on around you but you want to look like you're a natural and you don't want to look flighty just like look really confident and that also helps too with safety okay sorry that was all safety i actually talked more than i thought i was going to so apologies now i'm going to talk about girl specific um kind of traveling so first off my face and stuff really did freak out when i was there so i would recommend like especially if you don't if you have a pretty hormonal like if you have a hormonal, hormonal issue or if you have like a a face that just decides to like hate you um really bring some of your skincare products that you like uh um when it comes to birth control because this affected my face i was on the pill before i did i did to beef and then i got an iud right beforehand because i was 27 and I had insurance, but I knew when I came back, I didn't know what my insurance solution would be. I didn't know what I'd have. I knew I couldn't be on my parents' plan. So I got an IUD to be safe so that I knew I was taken care of in France because my insurance wouldn't work, like it was with my job and I was leaving my job. So obviously it wasn't going to work in France. Um, and I didn't know exactly what I could do there. So I just decided to get an IUD. Um, but I also being off the pill, I think screwed up my face and made me have even stronger reactions when I first moved there. And so it took a while for, so it was a, like a mix of all the things that caused my acne to like freak out. I think it was a mixture of the dairy, 
um, the stress of like just a change, what the water changes maybe, and uh, my hormonal changes that were caused by how, what I switched to. If you are on the pill or something like that, a lot of times you can ask your doctor for like a script for like long term. Like I know a lot of study abroad people do that and stuff, so you can certainly look up what study abroad people have done. Um, but you typically, especially if you're on your parents' insurance or something, which most likely you probably are, but you can ask for like a long term script. Um, to help refill that or of course ask your parents to mail it to you but that might be expensive i have no idea um that could add up on other side especially because some i got a package from my mom it was like a care package and i got it was taxed and i had to pay like 50 dollars 50 euro in tax so boo um when it comes to other hoo-ha issues one diva cup um, I started using that maybe like two or three years ago and it's really nice my god like I've gone through like probably a box of tampons since buying a diva cup which has been really lovely also since I've gotten my IUD sorry I should have TMI disclaimered this part TMI um but yeah I've like barely needed tampons anyway since I like I barely needed anything since I got my IUD but a diva cup was really nice and I honestly I recommend it for like all travelers I don't know how like it's just you can put it in and it lasts like 12 hours it's amazing the only bad thing about diva cups is like you can't really be taking them out and putting them in in public so it's definitely more of a private matter thing like you need a private bathroom or stuff like that to handle it in but it's still like such a safe space safe space or safe space saver and also just a money saver because you're not buying like tampons can get expensive and you can go through a lot like when I would buy a box I feel like I was definitely like maybe three months I'd get out of them I think it depended it, de it would depend on the size of the box and everything but still um and just space wise too because like if you're trying to bring all your tampons that's a lot um if you ha if you're like really anal about what tampons you use obviously then pack a bunch of those with you and i guess it's worth it to you um i think tampons can be pretty expensive in other countries i don't know i have never had to buy any but i know that they are typically dif like uh, typically dif different where i think like they a lot of ours have like the plastic applicator and i don't think that like they're more traditional like the cardboard applicators that you see like if you have like free tampons at your job or school or something a lot of times they'll have like the cardboard ones or i think no applicator at all and they're just like so careful with that um so i just really relied on my like diva cup um i think i have like the one the tulip one though whatever um and like panty liners because that makes me feel safer um something i just bought which i'm really excited about having when i do grad school is like the thinks period panties because i thought i bought like one normal pair of panties and like one thong um to have which I thought those were really nice because my friends use it my friend was using one and she was like yeah I think you should do it, it might be a nice ha to have and I thought that would be nice on days where I use panty liners typically and I don't have to like worry about it um so I'm really excited to use those and see how they work but yeah that's what um I think just my talk about the jays um clothing wise I also wanted to talk about um I didn't experience this I also didn't have to buy any bras, but I thought I had read that, especially if you have like bigger boobs or something, that it can be hard to find bras your size. So check it out online, maybe ahead of time, but if you think you're going to be needing to buy bras and stuff, especially if you have like larger boobs or if you have maybe like really small busts but very large <laughs> breasts, like two, um, kind of bring a couple bras with you ahead of time and stuff like that i don't think i had any problems i'm like a 30 a ford like double d and i was like i don't think i ever didn't see bras that didn't look like they would fit um i didn't have problems but i was nervous i have a really big like bottom area like i'm like a six up top and like a 10 on like down like so i have pretty large thighs and a butt and hips and stuff so i was actually nervous more about pants because also the french are such a skinny people they're just so thin and they like to remind they, they think all oh, americans are fat that is a stereotype that they definitely think of americans they think americans are fat like i had several teachers confirm that stereotype of us um but like it's so but it's so bad they just like i had showed a picture of food and they were like uh, oh yes that's how the americans eat because they're fat and i was like this is like typical new york street food calm down like i'm not I'm like this is not what we eat every day 
like and I'm like we have mixture body types <laughs> whatever but if you are curvy or anything like that it depends check um, definitely if you have favorite pants or something like I would certainly say bring enough like my thighs ate through like three pairs of jeans while I was there about not saying they were, br they were brand new jeans I had one pair that I bought there and they were just like bad from the get-go like something ripped on them immediately so they sucked from the get-go but um, yeah I would certainly say bring extras or anything like that um, however the nice thing about France nowadays too I think especially because there's more like Moroccans and Tunisians and like just North Africans and everything in general um, there's more curves and shapes in France than there used to be so I honestly didn't have any problems finding pants and stuff like in sizes that I liked and fit me because you do you look at traditional French people and they're all just like this big they're so small like all my French teachers where I was like how did you birth children like how did you birth children like are you sure they weren't adopted because your hips are like this big and you have two children like I don't know how your body did it I don't know but anyway that's kind of like a big um recommendation for me and then maybe too if you don't if you don't have internet if you're not planning on if you're just planning on using wi-fi or something like that because you're traveling and you're not really doing much else um like research your size and you want to do shopping research your sizes ahead of time so that you know because I found myself like googling so many times in stores like American to you know EU or like French because they're also different depending on what country you're in like to French like pant sizes um to see why well, I sounded really had a weird accent there um to see what sizes I was going to be and stuff so that's my recommendation I didn't have any problem I don't think with buying um anything or stuff like that but yeah those are my main things about safety and then also lady problems and ways to kind of prepare ahead of time and know what you can do and whatnot um if you would like you can let me know I'm happy to make a video too about my brief tinder experience that was horrible you probably don't want to have a video on that but um it was a thing anyway but I hope that was useful. Please do like, um, let me know if you'd want me to talk about anything else because I don't really have many other plans besides the ones I mentioned at the beginning. Um, yeah, best of luck. It's coming soon, uh, next to Pifier. So, bon chance et bisous.